Good afternoon. Earlier today, Hoover Police Detectives obtained warrants for the arrest of Carly Russell through the Hoover Municipal Court for her actions related to faking her kidnapping and subsequently making false statements to detectives as they investigated this case. Her decisions that night created panic and alarm for the citizens of our city and even across the nation as the concern grew that a kidnapper was on the loose using a small child as bait. Numerous law enforcement agencies, both local and federal, began working tirelessly not only to bring Carly home to her family, a located kidnapper that we know now never existed. Many private citizens volunteered their time and energy into looking for a potential kidnapping victim that we know now was never in any danger. This story opened wounds for families whose loved ones really were victims of kidnappings, some of which even helped organize searches in hopes they could find Carly's alive so that her family would not experience the pain and suffering that they felt when their loved ones never returned home. As we know, actions can have consequences, and that's why we're here today. This afternoon, Carly Russell, with the assistance of her attorney, turned herself into the Hoover City Jail, where she was arrested for the following charges. False reporting to law enforcement authorities, a Class A misdemeanor, $1,000 bond. Falsely report an incident, a Class A misdemeanor, with a $1,000 bond. Each of these charges carry up to a year in jail and potential fine of $6,000 upon conviction. Ms. Russell was released from jail after posting bond. We initially presented this case to District Attorney Lanise Washington, who agreed to handle prosecution through district court. After consulting with the Circuit Court of Jefferson County Bessemer Division, the case was referred back to municipal court for charging because the only applicable charges were misdemeanors. Judging from the amount of phone calls and emails that we've received from people all over the country, I know many are shocked and appalled that Ms. Russell is only being charged with two misdemeanors, despite all the panic and disruption her actions caused. Let me assure you, I too share the same frustration, but existing laws only allow the charges that were filed to be filed. All right, so Carly Russell was charged, arrested, and released this afternoon. You see her smiling here. All for the candid camera. Seems like it's all amusing to her. We're going to get into that along with a DC woman who was pretty upset about Carly's situation because her mother really went missing over 30 years ago in Pell City, Alabama. That's about 35 minutes from where Carly pulled off this hoax. I just want Carly to just understand the magnitude of her actions and that this is not a game to be taken lightly. Then you have people like Tamika Mallory saying that she would do this all over again. When she found out Carly was missing, Tamika went on the internet blaming police and comparing their search for Carly to the search for white men and now she seems to be blaming it on mental health. There has to be some mental health issue um, that would have you to do all of these different things for whatever reason. And Dr. Umar is 100% against Carly getting charged for this. He says black people should hold her accountable. I'm assuming he wants to hold her accountable by giving her a big hug or something. When I see you in Alabama, I'm going to give you a big hug and just say, baby, don't do that no more. Because guess what? Our women are trafficked inside the prison also black women are actually trafficked inside the prison also so why would any black woman or any black man would want sister carly arrested and in prison i don't support that narrative at all all of this is coming up but first take a second to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and click the notification bell for all updates Carly Russell is now facing a year in jail after she was arrested on two charges, false reporting to law enforcement authorities, and falsely reporting an incident. Her attorneys met with police earlier this week. They already knew it was coming and they arranged for her to be able to turn herself in. Carly Russell's attorney, Emery Anthony, told reporters after that meeting with Hoover Police that he expects Carly to be charged in connection with her fake disappearance. Two weeks ago tomorrow, Carly Russell called 911 saying she was following a toddler walking alone along Interstate 459. Police found Russell's car along with her Apple Watch and phone on the side of the road. Russell returned home alone and on foot 49 hours later saying she had been kidnapped by an unidentified man.
Hoover police questioned several aspects of the case, like Russell's claims to have followed the child more than 600 yards along the interstate and her Google searches leading up to her disappearance. Monday, Chief Derzas read a statement from Anthony stating, quote, there was no kidnapping on Thursday, July 13th, 2023. My client did not see a baby on the side of the road. My client did not leave the Hoover area when she was identified as a missing person, end quote. I'm assuming there won't be any charges related to her stealing from her job. The spa that she was working for did fire her, but it's unclear if charges are being pursued related to the crimes that she committed at work. There's a DC woman sharing her frustration with this case. It brought back a lot of pain for her that ties back to Alabama, where her mother went missing in Pell City in 1992, changing life for her, her sister, and her brother. Family members with missing loved ones watched the Carly Russell case very closely, and when they found out it was all a hoax, many were very upset. I spoke to a woman whose mother disappeared from St. Clair County decades ago about how she has been affected. My mother's name was Felicia Martin Cochran. Um, she was such a beautiful, sweet, caring, loving um, individual. She was a great mother. Brandy Martin is a grown woman now who calls Washington, D.C. home. But in 1992, she was 10 years old, living with her mother and siblings in Pell City. That's when her whole world crumbled. And the last time someone saw her was outside of a beauty salon where she was arguing with him and they left in her car. Her mother left with her stepfather. She was never seen again. It was very difficult to get media attention. I don't believe law enforcement at that time took it as seriously as we would have liked them to. Um, and so here we are 30 something years later, still wishing, hoping, praying, searching for answers. Brandy says if her mother's case had received the same attention as Carly Russell's, they might have found her or her remains. She says she's had moments when she's angry at Carly for faking the same experience her mom really went through. But mostly she just wants her mother's case and the tens of thousands like it to receive the same attention. I just want Carly to just understand the magnitude of her actions and that this is not a game to be taken lightly. And I hope whatever consequences come of this that she understands that she has to reap what she's sown. Lisa Crane, WVTM 13. There are so many cases of real people who went missing and it's really a slap in the face, especially to the families of those victims when you have Carly making up lies like this. Now remember activist Tamika Mallory had a lot of criticism two days after Carly pulled this off. Remember she was criticizing the police in Alabama asking if they use resources to find her and if they're giving Carly the same attention as the rich white men who went on that underwater excursion and never came back up. She really went in on them on social media, stirring up black women and turning their whole focus to why white people aren't helping Carly like they help white people. When the whole time you had hundreds of white people along with hundreds of black people searching for this liar. While Tamika was at her luncheon, you had all these different groups and people searching for Carly. Hoover Police, Jefferson County, Alabama, the FBI, Secret Service, all of these agencies using resources, including the technology and dogs Tamika was wondering about, they used all of that along with manpower and community volunteers. I don't blame Tamika for bringing awareness to Carly, but to do it in that way where she just started going in on the people actually doing the work when she was at the brunch or luncheon or wherever she was at, getting black women emotional and snapping on everybody online, that was just crazy. Uh, many of you were reaching out and saying, hey, this happened, this young lady is missing. Um, and so I already intended to get involved, but then I found out the next morning she was also my sorority sister, which of course, um, you know, made it even more intense. And so we weighed in and I would do that anytime. Your family reached out saying that their child was missing and she was in fact missing. So with all the details that we know now, she was in fact missing her family, um, you know, for the, from what I can tell her parents, especially who I'm praying really hard for, um, they did not know uh, where their daughter was. So, so she was missing. And so therefore everybody, anybody, it, all of us, any one of you who are here on this live did exactly what we were supposed to do. 
got people texting me like, are you okay? How do you feel? Of course, I feel disappointed. I feel sad. And I'm also, I just want to be clear that, you know, all of this is based upon what we're hearing from uh, the police report and some things that we saw online, people developing stories. Um, and so still have we, we not heard from Carly. However, based upon what we see from the police and, you know, from other reports, it seems as if she made a false report and that she lied. And so, you know, that is, that's that, you know, and I, and I pray for her. I truly do. I pray for the young sister. I hope that whatever she is going through or whatever has happened to her, that, um, you know, she gets the type of help that she needs, whatever the, the details may have been, because even if she, if what is being reported at this point or what we all um, are sort of taken away from the reports is true, that all of this was kind of pre-planned and staged. There has to be some mental health issue um, that would have you to do all of these different things for whatever reason. And they could just stop it with this mental health excuse. Then there's Dr. Umar. He low-key tried to blame her boyfriend by making light of her actions. You know, kind of trumping it up to women just being a little emotional when they want to get their man's attention. Absolutely unacceptable. And Dr. Umar is 100% disagreeing with anybody who says Carly should be charged for this. I want to talk to my sister Carly Russell next. I want to go down to Alabama one time and talk to my sister Carly Russell. I understand that you was going through some relationship issues and I know sometimes when the sisters go through some relationship issues, y'all can get a little out of pocket with the strategies y'all employ to get your significant other's attention. I understand that. I understand that. I understand we can all be a little immature in the way we address romantic issues, Sister Carly Russell. I can understand that. Nah, I don't understand it. No excuses. And this is why Alabama should punish her to the fullest extent of the law. Faking like this cannot be normalized, taken away from real victims. Sister Carly, don't you ever again in your life play games with the kidnapping of black women. Don't you ever do that again in your life. Don't you ever again play games with the trafficking of our sisters again. You are out of place. Your behavior was uncondonable, it was repulsive, it was disrespectful, and it was ignorant. And I'm going to ask you to never do that again. That was conduct unbecoming a young lady such as yourself. Don't ever do that again. You are playing with the safety of black women all over this country. Sister Carly Russell, you owe your sisters an apology. I do not want my sister going to jail. So for all y'all saying she need to be prosecuted and persecuted, I disagree with you. Don't know black woman belong in there. And this right here is the part I just can't take seriously. No black woman belongs in prison? I don't want to see her in prison for that. She made a big mistake and she needs to account and atone to the black community. Sister Carly made a big mistake and she needs to account and atone to the black community, but I do not want her persecuted or prosecuted. I don't want her charged. I don't want her indicted and I don't want her convicted. And I rebuke any of you who are trying to push that on that young sister. And this right here is what's been the problem in the black community for the last couple of decades. Sister Shaharza Ali talked about this in the 90s. The black woman is the only person in this country that cannot be criticized. And Dr. Umar says that Carly should be held accountable by the system. She should be held accountable by black people. How is that supposed to happen, Dr. Umar? There is no system controlled by black people in order to do that. That's why all the women have gone rogue. This is why. Because they have no one to answer to. It's just ridiculous to say that no black woman belongs in jail. So basically, Dr. Umar is saying that nothing should happen to Carly. I just can't. And you have a lot of Carly defenders who would agree with Dr. Umar. They don't think that she should go to jail. Saying that white women do it too, but they never bring up a white woman who did what Carly did and was sentenced to 18 months in federal prison for it. Sherry Papini sentenced in 2022 for lying, faking her own abduction back in 2016. She lied and said two Hispanic women took her. Carly lied and said a white man took her. 
but Sherry and Carly, that's comparing apples to apples. Sherry got a year and a half in the federal penitentiary. Will Carly get the same? Probably not. But will these same people be complaining about that though? Isn't that unfair? And I still want to know if they told the truth about that GoFundMe money. Remember her mom said they had nothing to do with any of those GoFundMe accounts. That if they saw them out there, it's a scam. But I'm wondering though, was Carly behind any of them? Is that being investigated? I don't know, but that $63,000 that Crime Stoppers raised, they need to stop playing and give that money back to those donors. If you want to see that full press conference, click the link below to check it out. Let's go ahead and get the conversation started below in the comments. Should she get probation or should they give her the full year in jail? Special thank you to Edmund. I appreciate you, Edmund, for all of your support, as well as Lamar. Thank you, Lamar. Don't forget that you can support this channel as well. Links to Cash App and PayPal are below. Ladies, fellas, want a balance analysis? Want the truth from a woman's perspective? Then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share.